Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for a little recap of Candy and Todd's new movie on Peacock, The Pass, A Scheme Todd Set Up. Girl, that's what I'm adding on to the movie title, okay? A Scheme That Todd Set Up. So y'all, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all, it was actually good. It did keep my attention most of the movie, but... I did figure out the scheme about 30 minutes in. I really figured it out as soon as I saw the mom. The mom was just talking way too much sense. And that's how I knew that it was a scheme and that the mom was probably right. And that the husband and all of his friends were involved in some type of scheme that Todd had set up. So I'm just letting y'all know off rip. Okay, this is a scheme that Todd has set up. So if you don't want to have it spoiled for you, I don't know why you're here. Okay, I don't know, but we're about to get into it. Okay, make sure you like the video, share the video. Thank you. All right, so the past, let's get into it. Maurice is the husband. He's trying to buy an upgraded diamond ring, $200,000 worth of a ring for his wife. He's been married to for seven years, Nina, played by Drew. And let me tell y'all, Drew actually did a good job. She did. She got the point across, okay? And I'm not even going to front on y'all. When I saw Erica Peoples, I was like, child, not Erica Peoples in another movie. Because I've seen at least 10 damn movies with Erica Peoples. And that's not a bad thing because she's really good. But I was kind of like thinking we might get new people in this movie, even though they were bringing in Drew. I thought, I, you know, I might see some new people. Especially because, you know, when they was talking about the lady being Ty's friend, I was just like, so does that mean Erica Peoples is gay in real life since she Ty's friend? You know, that don't mean anything. I'm just wondering, girl, because after the sex scene, I feel like people are going to be asking about Erica Peoples. I don't know if she's married. I don't know the lady's life like that. I know that she acts very well and she looked real good. And baby, the only thing to talk about as far as sex scenes in this movie to me is Erica Peoples, baby. There, there's nothing else to talk about. Okay. Drew is not talk worthy. I'm sorry, Mr. Maurice, your back look nice, but you wasn't worth talking about neither. It was all about Tara, Erica Peoples character. Okay. Now it's real weird because Nina Drew's character, okay, I'm just going to start calling her Nina at this point. It's supposedly best friends with Tara, but it doesn't really make sense because Tara is Maurice's friend. Like the very first scene, we see them in this jewelry store and he's trying to get this new ring for her because their uh, wedding anniversary is coming up, okay? He's supposed to be selling a mansion. And when he sells the mansion, he's supposed to get money to get this $200,000 ring. But as soon as he's about to buy the ring, he gets a phone call and it's it's, you know, womp, womp, womp. Apparently her mom, Nina's mom, is his boss at the, the real estate agency that he works at. And she put another agent on the case or the the house he was about to sell. So he's not going to get the full commission. Now he can't get the $200,000. Now he can't get this ring. But his homegirl, Tara, said, don't worry about it. I'm going to help you. And from this point on, I have been suspicious. Okay. Now let me go ahead. And let y'all know that the mama, this is the mama right here, y'all. This is Maya's mama from Girlfriends, which lets y'all know it is in alignment for me to go back, revisit, and re-review Girlfriends. So get ready because I'm going to be adding to my Now That We're Grown Girlfriends playlist. We're going to finish season one this week. Oh, yes, girl. I'm almost done taking all of my notes just to let you know, okay? So be on the lookout for it. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and your notifications are turned on. Sometimes you got to turn them off and then turn them back on because you two play games. Either way, Maya mama is up here doing exactly what she's supposed to do warning her daughter by using her discernment okay the mama said i don't like him he's a bum i don't like his friends where they come from why you don't have your own friends what is going on okay when the mama said why you don't have your own friends this is when i was like the mama probably right this is the the moment when i realized the mama probably right she mentioned him and the friends that mean everybody something wrong with everybody and guess what girl me and the mama was right me and maya mama was absolutely right 
So the deal is sabotaged, but you know what? Everything is still all good in the land of Nod with Nina and Maurice, okay? As you can see here, the food looked good. It was all smiles, laughs, okay? Everybody looks as if they are still happy, which is why I did not understand the past situation. It came out of nowhere. It didn't even seem like they really had issues. Yes, her mama don't like you, but so what? <laughs> like, I, I understand she just be walking in the house using her key. You know, it's real lack of boundaries as a lot of black parents you know they don't have boundaries girl nobody taught the slave owners how to you know give the parents some some boundaries when it came to how they raise their kids so you know i'm just telling y'all that's where that's from that's why parents act the way especially black parents that's why they act the way they do because there was no boundaries put in place because the only parents in relationship they know about came from slavery girl i'm sorry to take it all the way back there but that's where it come from either way Nina and her man seem to be fine. So when he brings up this past conversation, it, it was real suspect to me because he was like, child, I would I would never want to have a pass. But, you know, you know, would you want to have a pass? And his homeboy is the one that brought it up to him. Uh-huh. The friends. Again, the friends. All right. And you see this one right here, the one that looked like he talking. He the one that said his old lady gave him a pass. Guess who his old lady is? Candy girl, candy is played by Shay. But do y'all see this lady sitting next to Shay? That's Callie, and Callie is, you know, oh, good vibrations and energy. She had me suspect the entire time. I was like, I don't know why, but I'm getting real bad juju from this lady over here in the corner. I don't know if it's her wig. I don't know if it's the fake niceness or the fake softness. I don't know what it is, girl, but it is bothering me. Okay, either way. Shay mentions the past as well. And, you know, she says that, you know, she might have got her box, you know, munched on by a neighbor. But that's it, girl. She ain't did nothing else. He's the only one that gets the past. I'm going to tell y'all that don't make sense in my life. That don't make sense. I don't know why y'all do that. That's dumb. That's imbalance. No. Okay. One hand washes the other. Okay. That's just insane for you to even start out with the idea that only one person is going to get the pass. That's just dumb. If, if, if both people not going to do it, then neither needs to do it. I just feel like don't put a time frame on it. I don't know why it had to happen. One night only. One night only. Come on, big baby. Come on. I don't know why. I don't know why. Okay. But apparently um you know he's the only one that got the pass Shay didn't get the pass you know except for the little munch with the neighbor okay or they lying i honestly feel like they was lying but whatever girl it's all a scheme after after all it's all a scheme so after his homeboys tell him to stop overspending on nina i was like oh so he ain't got no money and he using his homeboys money that's a red flag okay Again, they have this conversation about the past and it just doesn't make sense. He's acting like he doesn't want it, which seems like a lie. OK, they live in the house her mom and dad lived in before her father passed away. Apparently they had money and she has a trust fund and everything. I'm like, that's another red flag. OK, her mama comes into the house using her key yet again, overstepping boundaries to apologize for overstepping boundaries previously. Okay, so we haven't learned anything. And she asked where Maurice is with his do nothing ass. And Nina is like, mom, why do you always have to talk down on him, mom? Why do you always have to do it? I've asked you too many times to stop doing that. And mama is like, look, baby, I'm sorry, but I call him how I see him. I call him how I see him. He look like a bum. He smell like a bum. His friends look like bums. And I definitely don't trust the Tara girl. No, I don't. Okay. And then Nina tells her that she got this promotion at her job. She got this big job that she had been vying to get this account. And her mom is so happy for her, y'all. She's an interior decorator and she works for Tara's interior decorating company. Girl, it, it felt like a plot the entire time. I'm not even going to lie. I was just like, girl, why she come back to this office and on none of this shit be here? Like, I just knew it was going to happen. I could feel it all in my bones. Every time they was in that office, I was like, uh-uh, all of that shit can easily be wrapped up and taken away i was wondering like is she actually getting paychecks like the whole time i'm thinking about the full setup of it all like are there real clients girl we don't know all right either way her mom felt like she could have her own business and she doesn't need to be partnered with anybody she can do her own thing she raised her to be you know on top but tara keeps saying 
that she groomed Nina, which is so problematic to me. I was like, girl, why is it that around the same time that this word groom happens because of Fallon, Fallon and Jalen? Thank y'all for y'all mess, okay? But y'all gave us the word groom all over again, and now we hearing Tara say groom 99 times in this damn movie, which lets me know what's going on, okay? Yeah, you grooming, you the boss lady, I hear it. She in charge of the girls, okay? So... For some reason, as an early anniversary present, Nina decides to give him a pass, I guess, to make up for how problematic her mother is. Girl, go to hell. <laughs> she says she doesn't want another man. I was like, girl, yeah, but you're going to want another woman. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to read between the lines. She says, don't let this ruin our relationship. And then they discuss the rules. He gets one time only, no friends, no no neighbors, um, no questions asked. One time only. That's it. Okay. Don't let it ruin the marriage. All right. They all go out and some guy recognizes them, y'all. Some dude on the street recognized them. He was like, Trent, Trent, yeah. You, you took all my sister. You took all my sister stuff. Man, man, I'm going to kill you, man. He just started losing his shit. They get into a fight. It's a little kerfuffle. Do y'all see Candy right now? Candy's face. Okay, Callie's face. The way Maurice was like, go get in the fucking car. I was like, who the fuck is he talking to? Why is he telling Nina to get in the fucking car like she did something wrong? Girl, it was all way too red flaggy for me. Look at Candy's eyes right here, y'all. Y'all know this ain't right. OK, this is letting me know everything I needed to know. That's why I had to get this screenshot for y'all. OK, so now she's wondering, should I look into this? OK, because she goes on a business trip with Tara. All right. They're at the bar. She's confiding in Tara about how that really, you know, had her, her uh, spidey senses tingling. She want to know what's up. She want to know what's good. Like, should I research this? The man mentioned the same place that Maurice came from before we got together. Like, should I dig into this? And Tara was like, girl, no, you need to be in a moment. You need to drink this drink. OK. And I was like, why? It looked like she slipped her a Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. She slipped her a Mickey. And just when we think her dancing on this this dude was going to end up with her getting banged out in her hotel room. Oh no, girl. She ends up upstairs hunching, bumping and grinding, kitty clicking, kitty clacking with Tara. And let me tell y'all, okay, because we saw them film this scene on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Girl, it was about Drew on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Girl, Drew didn't give us nothing. Drew gave us pillow princess and, and, and fake moans. I was not convinced by her. The only thing I was looking at was Erica People's back. First of all, and I'm and I'm saying Erica Peoples because it is purely Erica Peoples, y'all. I want to say I've I've like gotten this vibe off her in previous movies, but it don't matter. Okay. Tara is sexy as fuck. Her back is sexy as fuck. And the way she laid Drew ass out, okay, the way she laid Nina's ass out, you know what I'm saying? Because Drew be acting. So it is what it is, girl. I don't have to use the names all the time because y'all know y'all know what I'm saying, what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Bitch, ain't nobody pretending to be lesbians right now. Nobody's pretending to be lesbians. It's given we're just reenacting what we know. <laughs> we're going for what we know. It's what it's giving. But all I'm going to say is, child, Erica Peoples is something else, okay? She was the best part of the sex scene, girl. She gave everybody something they could feel. Okay. I was like, oh no, I wasn't expecting to be turned on. Oh no. <laughs> Girl, I'm turned on. I, I didn't forgot that Drew was even there. Shit. Now I'm laying there with the sheets on top of me. Girl, Drew, you couldn't show no titty or nothing. Like next time I want y'all to hire people that's going to really get sweaty in these scenes. Like stop hiring people that's not going to fully commit to the role when they got people out here that will commit to the role. Like that was the type of sex scene that needed at least an areola. You know what I'm saying? It needed a nip. Can, do we not get nipple sightings on Peacock? Is that what it is? I don't know. But the, the way the covers was covering Drew, it was giving, you know, this church girl don't want to show even a little titty. She don't want to show no titty fat nowhere in this sex scene. And I, I didn't really appreciate it. But I'm just going to say, uh, Sarah, put it down. And the whole fell in love, okay? Now, she looked like she really felt bad about it. Like, she was in the bathroom. What did we do? Oh, my God. I regret it. It can never happen again. But she kept thinking about it. And then she got to work and saw that Tara was flirting with her little assistant. Uh-huh. Come to find out, girl, Tara was fucking the little assistant, too. Ate her out all on the desk. 
and, and Nina saw it. And I felt like it was for Nina to see. It was to make Nina jealous, okay? So not Nina jealous, but she knows she can't have Tara. So then we start getting all this little evidence on Maurice. Now, let me let y'all know, Maurice never even had sex with another woman. He went to the strip club. He, dang, he let Shamia dance on his lap. He came back. The hunch on Shamia, Shamia was gone. Okay, so he didn't get to hunch on Shamia, all right? He didn't get to use his past, but she keep finding evidence that he's cheating on her or sleeping with somebody. She saw text messages on his phone, like the notification popped up, and it was Shamia ass, okay? Talking about, I miss you. So now she's confused because he said he didn't use the past, but it looked like you did because the girl ass is on your phone. You obviously used the past to get the ass on your phone, okay? But either way, he's saying, no, it's not happening. She thinks that he's lying to her. It's, you know, it's real gaslighty, basically. So it makes her feel like she's crazy. And... Then there's even more evidence. So they had an anniversary party, right? Somehow, some way, Tara got the, the ring so that Maurice can give Nina this engagement ring, right? Well, not an engagement ring. I'm sorry, y'all. Upgraded wedding ring at the anniversary party, right? It's so beautiful. Oh, my God, everybody loves it. But then we saw her plant red panties behind their bed. I was like, what the fuck is this? It was so weird. And this is when we realized, girl, that it's a scheme that Todd has set up. Because they keep planting evidence for her to find, but it's not real evidence, okay? So she says that, you know, she saw the, the, the text messages she tells her homegirls, and the homegirls make her feel like she's crazy, especially this Cali one. This Cali one really, really made it seem as if she was crazy, and she was questioning her own sanity, girl. I was just like, yeah, no, uh-uh. It's, it's all a scheme, girl. And this, this is when I'm solidified in the schemage that's going on here. All right. Um, so she ends up doing what Shay told her to do and putting cameras in the house. And then she finds more evidence on him. I think she found like a condom in his pocket, a broken condom in his pocket, which of course makes her feel like he's cheating on her. Just after they had all of this good sex that made her feel like they were all connected. See, emotional roller coaster. I be telling y'all when people be having y'all up and then down, up and then down, that's a red flag. That's intentional. They doing that shit on purpose. I tell y'all that in real life all the time. Guess what? Todd must know these games because he wrote it into this here movie. OK, because that's exactly what they was doing. Made the girl feel good. Make her find the condom. Now she's crashing down. She's trying to make sense of it all. She's going crazy. She talks to the homegirls. They tell her, get the camera. She get the cameras. But she forgets that she gets the cameras because she's mad now. She's mad and she's jealous of Tara hunching on her assistant mad about Maurice cheating. So she invites Tara to her bed, which was a no-no in their rule book, right? But she doing it to get back at him because he lying in her face, according to her, right? So they hunch in a bed and then Tara finds the red panties that she planted there previously and shows them to Nina. So now Nina is heartbroken and the bitch is smirking when she walks out the room. You gonna, you gonna be all right, girl. Like you just finished eating her coochie. Now she over there crying and you walking out the room like your job here is done. I would have been very suspicious of that. Like, you're not even going to comfort me a little bit, bitch. Not even a hug or a kiss goodbye. Uh-uh. I was just looking at the whole situation like it was suspect, okay? But y'all know, just like Drew, Nina is not paying attention to any of these things. They even have all of these side conversations throughout the movie that let you know that there is something going on that Nina doesn't know about that everybody else does know about, okay? So... So, because of everything that's going on, Nina has decided that she wants to get a divorce. And she tells this to Tara while they're, you know, in the bed or whatever, doing some pillow talk. Well, she took this back to Maurice and Maurice files the divorce papers on her before she even could. She actually changed her mind and didn't do it because he soft talked her. And then he went and filed the paperwork on her. I'm like, child, this is giving real reminiscent of Drew and Ralph's relationship. Child, when they get in the room with the judge and the lawyers and they start playing evidence of her in a bed with Tara on that video camera, Girl, 
Girl, that's when you realize how big the setup was and how right Maya Mama was, girl. Maya Mama was 100% on the money. So that made the prenuptial agreement that she signed void. And she just got the money from her trust fund, which was a lot of money. I think it must have been like $20 million because they ended up getting $9.5 million, which is half from her. OK, so they played the long game, a seven year scam on this lady for nine point five million dollars. OK, stole everything from her. And when she went back to that, to the business that Tara supposedly had, it was gone. Everything was gone. It was all gone, girl. It was a scheme that Todd and them had set up. And so now they're working on their next gig when it's all said and done. Got this girl for half her damn money. The only person left was her mama. That's how sometimes, even if you think your mama is controlling, it's okay to sometimes believe her intuition and have some checks and balances about your shit. Stop being stupid. Okay, because this absolutely reminds me of loving hip hop uh Miami and gunplay and how gunplay little girlfriend, uh wife Von Shea. OK, that's the wife. So Von Shea, OK, the mama told you about this nigga and you ignored her three page letter, letting you know that this nigga wasn't shit. Now what didn't happen? He didn't pull the rifle on you and your six month old baby. And somebody said that she told Tasha K that he, you know, he, he choked the baby out. I don't know how true that, you know, is. I don't know. But they did say domestic violence. They did say child abuse. OK, they said all of these things. Either way, these are red flags, y'all. Whether it is fiction or real, pay attention to the signs. OK. Art is based on life. I tell y'all that all the time. People don't just make movies out of nowhere. <laughs> they don't just write scripts out of nowhere. Okay? It's from somewhere, girl. Life experience. All right? But at the end of it, we see it was all a scheme that Todd had set up. Mm -mm -mm. Either way, I hope y'all enjoyed this little recap of the movie. And I'll be coming to y'all later on today, probably around 2 p.m. Central Time for a live so we can discuss Love and Hip Hop Miami and Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, girl. I will not be on camera for that one either, but I can't wait to talk to y'all about it. See you in the next one. Peace out.